Well, all right. After I made that uh, video up above there and was explaining to you about how I lined the rail, I thought to myself, you know what? If, if you're really, if somebody's not fairly familiar with the tamper uh, and how it operates, uh, probably would have no clue what I was talking about. So I'll uh, <coughs> explain this a little bit better for you here. Um, we've got to have, this is my light carriage. And what we want to do is have the light carriage and the mask follower and the rear rear follower uh, receiver all referenced against one rail or the other. So I have it selected for grade rail right, so that means everything's got to get shifted over to hold against that rail. And the light carriage, this is how I do it. It's mechanical. See the big gap we got there? I got sun back here in the, behind me, so I um, don't know how this is going to turn out, but this wheel right here, we're going to shift it over against this rail, and this will hold it. See, it's very important, so we got it over there against this rail now. Great. And uh, in the cab, I've got a switch there to throw for the uh, mask follower and the receiver in the back. And there's shift cylinders that move those over. Those shift cylinders are not getting air. That's what's wrong with his valve. Why I can't line track. Because you imagine if if I had one against one rail, fine. And these two back here, I'm going down the track and they're moving back and forth. Well, guess where my track alignment's gonna go? It's going to move back and forth. The track alignment is going to shift back and forth. That's why it's very critical that all three of these be referenced against the same rail all the time when I'm lining track. And when I'm talking about lining track, it means I'm putting it into alignment. Now, when I surface lift, that means I'm just, I don't have to line when I'm surface lifting, but that means I just pick the rail up a certain amount, whatever I want, and tamp ballast under it. So I'm just doing a surface lift. Okay, uh, when I do a surface lift, this light up here comes into play. And it shoots a beam back through that black mask up there with the slit in it into a receiver behind my, my uh, little mirror there. All right, see the receiver, the silver box sitting there? You notice the piece of rail I got on top of my fuel tank. Somebody uh, fueled this the other day and forgot to put the fuel, fuel cap back on and it fell off coming up track and I can't find it. I don't know who that somebody would be. I'm not mentioning any names, but I think his name starts with Dave. Dummy. Anyway, so when I'm lining track, this light here, well, let me go back up to here. I wanted to tell you, we uh, these are off-road sealed beam lamps and way in the past we tried aircraft landing lights and they were really bright really bright and i liked them but they just didn't last very long maybe uh four five months six months and and, and you had to replace them these uh off-road uh headlamps last for years so that's what we're going through the aircraft landing lights are expensive to buy and those ain't the easiest thing to change in the world but you got to get them adjusted just right. Anyway, so when I'm lining track, we're shooting a beam off of here. This is all a 24 volt system. Shooting a beam back through this bottom mask. Beam goes in the mask, back to that receiver. And this is called a lining actuator. And it moves this mask back and forth as I'm going down the track trying to find the light, okay? And this right here is my uh, shift cylinder. You can see that okay, there's a little shadow in there. But that shift cylinder, when we throw air on it, like I should have now, it should be pushing this whole mass over against the other rail. And that's not happening because my bow is bad back here. All right? So you see why it's important that all this get referenced on the same same rail and then my lining beam 
goes back into this receiver. Now right here, I'm going to back away a little quieter back here. Back there where I showed you, there's a bank of photo cells. And they're little photo cells. They're about that big around the size of my little finger. They're all spaced across. There are two rows of them. So if the lining light's on one side, shows up on one side of that receiver, then the machine's going to want to know to take the rail when it clamps it and push it over till that lining light gets directly in the center. And that's via zero voltage. So that shuts off the jacking of the track. And the same way up here with my uh, lifting. When the track gets jacked up to the center photo cell, voltage is zero, jacking stops. That stops the jack on the, uh, the jack beam here. This is the jack beam. Okay, I'm going to shut this machine off and be right back and show you that valve back in there because it's, it's uh, really noisy back there. And, all right, be right back. Okay, I'm back. I shut the machine off, picked everything up because uh, I got a train coming here soon. I got to get out on track. So I wanted to be all ready to go when I did that. I'm just waiting for a train right now. I told you uh, a couple things I thought about here, about this lining actuator moving this mask back and forth uh, in relation to the track. And it's trying to find the light. Uh, this also when I'm doing is surfacing. Uh, the same thing's happening with the light shining through that slot into the receiver back here. And this transducer right here is going up and down with the uh, track deviation. So if we come to a spot where the, uh, the track is high, it's going to shine light into the top of that receiver back here. And it's going to say that means no jacking necessary. But if the track surface is low in relation to where I have my light set out there, then it's going to tell. So it's, the track surface is low. It's going to tell the light beam is going to go into the bottom part of that receiver. And it's going to tell the machine to want to jack the track up until it hits that middle photo cell. And that zeroes the voltage out. Okay, uh, this is a very simple explanation of what happens on the outside with my lining and my uh, surfacing. What goes on inside the machine is a, uh, a, an incredible amount of electrical stuff happens inside the machine. Now that'll take one, maybe two, probably two, maybe three videos to actually go over in detail. <laughs> if I ever decide to do that, we'll get there. Um, so we're gonna show you in here, uh, this is a Cummins, nice, good engine, real good engine. But this right here is the valve that went bad. Okay, this control, this gets air fed into it and it controls the lift cylinders, these lift cylinders to pick this uh, rear receiver follower up. It also controls the shift cylinders down there to shift it against either rail. Now, the uh, top part of the valve here controls the lift cylinders. The bottom part of this valve controls the shift cylinders. So air is not getting through that bottom part to either side. So there you have it. And uh, that's, so we got a valve ordered. And uh, there's like four different styles of those valves, depending on what machine you got. So we're waiting on parts, as uh, a lot of people seem to be waiting on stuff nowadays. Anyway, those are my hydraulic pumps. And one day I'll make another video on all of this, too, show you exactly what everything is and what everything does in here. This is an old machine. <laughs> but, all right, thank you very much for watching. Said I'll have a train down here in a few minutes. And I got to get that on track so I can still surface track without my lining circuit. So I'm good. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, happy rails to you until we meet again.